So today's notes are going to be a review of what you've talked about before in elementary school. And we actually kind of touched on uh, just what machines are all about today in class. So I just wanted to review with you the six simple machines and we're going to go into more detail about them tomorrow and Friday as we apply them to what we learned about uh, work and power and we'll talk about something called mechanical advantage. So uh, these notes should basically just kind of cover information you already know and hopefully um, if there is some information you don't know we'll be able to practice it more and you can com become comfortable with it in class. So the definition of a simple machine is that it makes work easier by doing one of three things. It either is going to change force or the distance that you have to apply your force or the direction of the force. And this is something we took notes on in class today and discussed several examples. So if you are confused about that, make sure you look back at those notes on page 56. So the first simple machine in our notes today is the inclined plane. This is probably the simplest one out of all of them. This is a flat slanted surface and the best example of this could be a ramp. The longer the plane is, uh, typically it'll be less steep. That means it's shallower or it's shorter and that gives us uh, a requirement of less force. That way we don't have to put so much effort into getting a load to move up the plane. And you may have experienced this uh, either maybe helping someone move and putting things onto a moving van or on the ramps that are next to stairs outside of buildings. The next type is a wedge, and this is a little step up from inclined planes because this is basically like two inclined planes attached to each other back to back. A wedge is thick at one end and it tapers to a thin edge at the other end. So it gradually gets smaller and smaller. So an example of something that's a wedge could be like an axe head, um, knife, or scissors. Things that are sharp, they have a point to them, are wedges. The longer and thinner the wedge is, the less force is required to get it to move and cut an object. So between wedge A and B, just ask yourself for a second, which one of these would require less force to kind of shove into an object. Hopefully you would choose A. The next simple machine is the screw and this is a wedge that has essentially an inclined plane being wrapped around the wedge kind of like the stripes around a candy cane. So obviously the screw is an example of this. Uh, the closer the threads are together the less force is required. So if you've ever helped put together like maybe a shelf or um, a few weeks ago I helped one of my friends install a TV like onto the wall and we had to put some screws into the wall to kind of anchor um, the I guess hook that was going to hold the TV onto the wall and so we wanted to use screws that had lots of threads because then it would hold um, everything in place better and it would be a lot easier for us to screw it into the wall. So the wheel and axle involves two circular objects that are fastened together and they rotate around an axis. So an axis is a fixed point that everything else rotates around, kind of like the earth rotates around an axis at the north and south poles. The wheel is the ob object that has a larger diameter and the axle has a smaller diameter. So if you remember math class, diameter goes from one point all the way across to the other. And so in this little picture, the R stands for radius because that's half of diameter. So an example here could be like a screwdriver. The handle that you hold would be like the wheel, and then the shaft of the screwdriver itself is the axle that everything else rotates around. You can think about a doorknob, um, a wheel on a car or a bike. So anything that involves a wheel that is attached to a fixed point that everything's rotating around involves the simple machine. We talked about pulleys in class today. A pulley involves a wheel that has a groove um, along the edge of the wheel that has a rope being able to fit into that groove so it doesn't slip off one side or another. There are two types of pulleys. One is called a fixed pulley. And if it is fixed, that means it is stuck in place and it doesn't rise or fall with whatever load you're carrying. So an example of this would be like a flagpole or... Um, 
if any of you have blinds or shades on your windows that you can pull a string to make it rise and fall, the pulley itself is attached to the top of the window and it doesn't move up and down with the shade. So that would be fixed. A movable pulley actually rises and falls with the load and usually this is involved in a series of pulleys that helps you reduce how much force you have to put behind pulling the string. Finally, the lever is the sixth type of simple machine. This is a rigid bar. Rigid means that it is going to hold its shape. Um, it's not easily changed. So it's, it's basically the opposite of being malleable, which is what we talked about in the first semester. And this is free to pivot or rotate around a fixed point. So if any of you are basketball players or you're a fan of basketball, and you've heard the word pivot, that means that one foot is planted on the ground, so it's in place, it doesn't move, but the rest of your body can rotate around your foot. And so that's what pivoting means, is that one uh, place is kind of stuck, and then everything else rotates around it. So there are lots of different types of levers that we can talk about. Um, if you ever have like the orange soda that comes in the bottle or root beer, um, a lot of times those have a top that you need a, a bottle opener to open. Um, it, just shoveling snow, a lot of you may have had to shovel snow lately. A shovel is a lever, a rake is a lever. If you ever have to do chores such as sweeping the house or using a mop, those are levers. So some vocabulary involved in levers and we'll do some practice with them in class. A fulcrum is a fixed point that the lever rotates around. So it's that point that's stuck in place, kind of like the middle of a seesaw, everything else rotates around it. The effort arm has to do with what you put in. That's why it's called input. And that's where you supply the force. And the resistance arm is also known as the output arm. And that's where the effect of your force is felt. So that's where the machine puts out what you have put into it. So most of the machines that we encounter in everyday life are not just one type of simple machine. Usually it's a team of simple machines coming together, um, usually at least two or more. And so that is called a compound machine. Kind of like a compound word is made up of two or more words that come together to make one big one. Same idea behind this. So examples would be the bike. Um, if you've ever seen the Terminator movies, um, that's just a joke, but Terminator could also be considered a compound machine. Now tomorrow we're going to talk about mechanical advantage and what that means, basically what type of advantage I get from using this machine. And it tells me what the job is of the machine based on the number. So we'll discuss that in class. Um, and we can just save what this little blurb says about it for tomorrow. I actually just forgot to take that off the PowerPoint. So my apologies. Um, hopefully this was a good review for you from elementary school and um, maybe even a little bit from sixth grade. And let me know if there are any questions or things that you're confused about before we move on with uh, applying work and power and force to all of this tomorrow. Hope you have a good evening, and I'll see you.